I was at the Washington Post. I was covering the uh, national campaign of, uh, of then Senator Obama. And so I was on his, his campaign plane and there was a rally. Um, let's see, uh, Senator Hillary Clinton and him, they were, they were battling for the nomination. And there was a rally in uh, North Carolina uh, in a big auditorium uh, and I went to the rally to, to hear the senator talk, who was trying to become the nation's first African-American president. And his, at the end of his talk, it was dark outside, and I walked outside. Um, and there were, uh, there were three young ladies, uh, you three, stand up. Emily, Kate, Elizabeth, stand up. Okay, three young ladies just like these three ladies. And they were crying. They were on a bench outside of the, uh, of the, of the big auditorium. And I went over to them and I said, excuse me, my name is Will Haygood. I'm a writer for the Washington Post. Is there anything wrong? Is there anything I can help you with? They were crying, they were sobbing. <coughs> oh, all right, you can sit down. And <laughs> they were sobbing and they all say it, well, our fathers have kicked us out of our homes because we support that black candidate inside on stage. All three were white. And it was a powerful moment because, you know, they had stood up to their father's old fashioned racial beliefs. And, you know, they were just good human beings who would not be defined by, um, uh, racist attitudes. And I remember getting back to my hotel that night and I said to myself, oh my God, he's going to win. Obama's going to win because of people like those three young ladies because they had such courage. Um, now given the history of slavery in this country and racism and the laws that Thurgood Marshall had to fight to change, um, you know, not a lot of people, you know, thought that Obama could win, you know. Uh, but it's a great thing that for the majority of your lives, you've grown up with a black president. I mean, you will remember that. I mean, that's history has been made on your watch. I mean, it, it's just phenomenal. Um, and I happen to think he's been a great president. Um, but I went to the newsroom and told my editor, I said, Steve, Senator Obama's going to win. And Steve looked at me, he said, Will, you're tired. You've been out on the campaign trail too long. He said, you know, he's going to make a good showing, but he's not going to win. What makes you think that? And I told him the story about the three Girls, and I said, because that type of emotion is going to spread from town to town, village to village, state to state. And I said, I think it's going to cascade. And I said, because I think he's going to win, I want to find somebody from the era of segregation who worked in the White House, a black person who worked in the White House, and I want to tell their story against the backdrop of what I think is going to be this amazing victory. Now, a lot of pieces had to come together for that to happen. Um, uh, so Steve said, well, who are you going to be looking for? And I said, I want a black shoeshine person who worked in the White House, or somebody who worked in the Rose Garden, who's black, or a maid, a black maid at the White House, or a black, and this last word just dropped out. And it gives me chills to think how it entered my consciousness because I really don't know how I came up with Butler. And I said, and the last person I wanna look for is a Butler. And so he said, 
well, take a week, but then I'm going to need you back out on the campaign trail. I said, all right. I was convinced that there was somebody out there in this country who <clears throat> had worked at the White House whose, whose heart and soul would be forever changed if they could see what I thought might happen on November 4th, 2008. And so uh, I started making some phone calls and asking people, hey, do you know anybody black who worked at the White House before the 1964-65 civil rights laws were passed, um, you know, with some kind of history there? And I was striking out, and then a lady calls me from Tampa and says, I really don't want to tell you who I am, but uh, I did work in the White House, and there's a gentleman there by the name of Eugene Allen. And uh, my daughter was at uh, some party in Washington, D.C., and overheard that somebody said, Will Hager of the Washington Post is looking for any White House employee, black, who was there before the civil rights bills were passed. And I said, yes, I am. She said, well, there's a man by the name of Eugene Allen, and she said, I think he worked for three presidents. Three. I said, oh, okay. I'm interested in, in talking to him. And um, I said, uh, what's his phone number? And she said, you're the reporter, aren't you? <laughs> and clicked and hung up the phone. Just bye, you know. She had, she had completed her mission. She had got a name to me, and I was grateful for that. And so... And she, she had said that the last she saw him, he was coming out of the White House and getting into a uh, local taxi. So that told me, as a journalist, that he must live within the area, either Virginia or Maryland or Washington, D.C. So I got out phone books. I did not Google a butler who worked for many presidents whose story might lead to a movie starring Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> no. I got phone books and started making cold calls. And, um, you know, I would say, hello, my name is Will Haygood. I'm with the Washington Post, and I'm looking for Mr. Eugene Allen, who worked at the White House for three presidents. Well, that is my name, but I never worked at the White House. No, that's not me. No, never heard of that person. Ten calls turned to 20, turned to 30, turned to 40, turned to 51, 52, because I was doodling. 53, 54, 55, 56. On the 57th call, I said, hello, it's Will Haygood of the Washington Post, and I'm looking for Mr. Eugene Allen, who uh, I believe worked at the White House for three presidents. And he said, well, you're speaking to him. And I said, ah, great. He said, but before I go on, let me, let me correct you about something. He said, it wasn't three presidents that I worked for. It was eight, Harry Truman to Ronald Reagan. He said, now by my math, that's eight. And of course, that's stunning, you know. And so, you know, I set up the interview and then went and spent time with him and wrote this. I, I went over there on a, I called him on a, I reached him on a Wednesday, wanted to come the next day he said, I couldn't because he and his wife had doctor's appointments. So I went on Friday, right, sir? He said, four days before the 2008 election, Friday. Had a great time with him and his wife, really taking me through history. I mean, you got to realize, here's a man who's black in 1959, works at the White House, and on the weekend he can go to his hometown in Virginia, and not be allowed to try on a man's suit in the store because he's black. Even though he worked at the most powerful address in the world, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Never missed a day of work. Loved the presidents, all of them, and considered it his duty to take care of them. A genuine patriot, if you ask me, and a beautiful man, very elegant, had a lot of class, a lot of style. And so, I spent all uh, this time with him Friday. Uh, on Sunday, 
the photographer goes to take pictures of him and his wife. Uh, Sunday night, his son, Charles, comes over and Mrs. Allen says, Charles, I'm so happy. Goodness gracious, I'm so happy. He said, Mama, what happened? Have you hit the lottery? She said, no. She said, There's a, she said, you know how I've been trying to get somebody to write about your dad all these years and nobody wants to write about his story. Well, there's a writer who came over here from the Washington Post and he's going to tell your daddy's story. There was some, uh, some people visiting Mrs. Allen and she turned to him. This is two days before the election and she says, hey everybody, I'm tired, but I'm so happy. I, I, I mean, I'm so happy. I'm going upstairs and now I'm going to bed. That was Sunday. She went upstairs, went to bed, and died. You know, that's why people say real life is far more <coughs> intriguing, fascinating than, uh, than fiction. You can't make that up. I mean, she went upstairs and died, and her husband, uh, the butler, went to vote all by himself to help get the first African-American into the White House. So they've been married 65 years. So on that note, look for stories where you think other people are not going to look for them. Journalism is such a great, great, great undertaking. You know, people want to have writers telling telling, uh, telling s the stories of this country, how we got from there to here. You know, people often say journalism is the first draft of history. And, uh, and that it is. Okay? Thank you so much.